Insight Wrestling Podcast on the one and only 411 Podcast Network. We are back in the lab. Mr. The Steve lab. Matson. how you doing? Good. How are you doing? Back in the lab. I, I think everyone got kind of sick of me the past two weeks, so we're back. Oh, you think that uh, they weren't enjoying the, the solo act? Uh, I never enjoy my own solo act, Uh-oh. but that's a different podcast. That's um, a wrong podcast. That do is not the, subscribe to that one. Do not. So we got a lot to talk about. We just had SummerSlam weekend. Yeah, we did. But you want to use that as a segue and tell them which one they should be subscribing to? I don't know. Why don't you tell me? It's your show, man. <laughs> all right, fine. I suppose I can get some cheap plugs out here. If you want to subscribe, you know all about it. 411 Foresight Wrestling Podcast on the 411 Podcasting Network, Spotify, Stitcher, iTunes, Google Play, YouTube, and you can also read us and actually listen to us on the 411mania.com. You can also find all my columns. That's what I meant by read. So SummerSlam weekend. On the whole, what do you think? Right. I, I thought it was a great weekend. Uh, I actually got to watch it on a larger screen down here in the lab. First time watching a pay-per-view in the lab. But, uh, no, I thought it was a real good pay-per-view weekend. I had a fantastic time. TakeOver was awesome as always. SummerSlam was surprisingly good. It was one of those not-let-down kind of shows. Yeah, I think uh, Toronto got their money's worth. The next year is Boston. Boston. Where it's going to be wicked smart. (laughs) It's going to be in Boston. And uh, the rumor a few weeks ago, or months ago, I think it was, was they wanted to go to Fenway Park. They wanted to baseball, but I think some issue with that or... I forgot what it was, something with the building. So, you know, they're just going to go to the uh, arena in Boston. But. Well, do you really want, like, 50,000 wrestling fans on your field that may potentially need baseball games played on it? <laughs> well, I mean, that's true. I guess the Rumble was in January where they just had it in Phoenix. Yeah. So. But I was thinking more along the lines of the giant green monster wall. Do you know about this? No. Fen- Fenway Park, the left field is basically like a 50, 60-foot just giant wall. Like okay. the other, you know, in baseball stadiums, it's like a 10, 15 foot high right, home run. Right, yeah, yeah. It's just a giant wall. Just I was just wall. thinking more of like keeping Shane McMahon away from that <laughs> in case he got any ideas. <laughs> oh, God. Or maybe you'd like him climbing up there. I mean, I'd be fine with it. Depends can, on the result, I guess. Yeah, he can climb whatever he wants to climb. Yeah, as long as it's not <laughs> the ladder to the top of the company. But anyways, so we're going to start with NXT TakeOver, obviously. Um, Street Profits, still tag team champions over the Undisputed Era. I saw that. I was a little confused. I thought we were going to have a whole Undisputed Era draped in gold moment. Yeah, that was uh, definitely the uh, upset of the night already, and it, the show had just started. So we started off right away with, I thought, a surprising result. And yeah, I think, absolutely. I think like most, we thought uh, Undisputed Era was getting all the gold. But I like this because uh, Triple H had actually said it before, is that there is no set rule with them because they haven't been wrestling on Raw. So right. they're not necessarily getting, quote-unquote, called up. You know, they're still going to be doing their double duty, but they're really just on Raw kind of be like hype men or whatever. Yeah, they're kind of keeping themselves visible. So when they actually do make the move, we already are familiar with them. We know who they are. And it I don't know. I thought they put on a great match. Um, I haven't been watching a whole lot of NXT, the program. So this was like one of my first, I think, I, the last takeover I saw them too. But uh, it was really nice to see the Street Profits do what they do. And seeing Angelo Dawkins, I remember when I used to watch NXT, him being a single star and it just wasn't working. And now he's gaining a lot of success with what he's got going on. Yeah, he is. I thought Montez Ford actually impressed most in this match. And um, they're actually, I think, taping, I believe, either as we speak or tonight or Friday night or something. It's Thursday night right now, so I think they're actually taping soon. Check your local listings. (laughs) I still wonder, you know, if Street Profits are sticking around in NXT more, but I wouldn't be against it. No, not at all. I mean, they're going to bring a little... And if they're, you know, the rumors are true and they're going to go head-to-head with AEW in the fall, um, they're going to need that kind of visibility to actually do some competition. Yeah, that was one of the things coming out of it. If they do go live, FS1, whatever the rumor you want to believe, this did feel like they were kind of cementing a few talents that they do want to showcase, and Shree Profits was one of them. Yeah. So we're going to get to this in a little bit, but a little teaser here. Do you think the Undisputed Era stick together? Um, You know, I, I, I couldn't tell you. Um, based on, on how they kind of reacted at TakeOver, I, they really didn't do anything to tease some type of crack in the foundation, but uh, 
Time will tell, you know? Yeah, I would say neither did the shield before Seth Rollins took oh, a chair. <laughs> that's a very good point. Very good point. Up next, we had, uh, I don't want to say match of the night besides the main event, but Io Shirai defeated Candice LeRae. Wow. What a match. I loved it. I thought it was great. I think Io was obviously the right call with her new yeah. character and what she was doing. When you, when you do that kind of change, you got to give him strength right off the bat. Yeah, I thought Candice actually, kind of like the Street Profits here and the Undisputed Era, even in defeat, I thought a star was quote-unquote made with Candice here because, let's be honest, on NXT TV, she hasn't really done much. Not a whole lot. She has been cast as Johnny Gargano's wife, which isn't fair to her because, as we saw on Saturday night, She's got skills. She's obviously got it. So I love this match, and Io Shirai is just hitting it, hitting a home run right now. Yeah, and the Koji clutch, huh? Bringing that out. Yeah, I loved it all, and I look forward to see where they're going because obviously we're going to get to in a little bit, but you know we still have a heel champion, so is Io not going to go for the title right away? Um, I would think not yet. I mean, she's definitely going to make her way there, and that'll be interesting to see if they're going to keep it heel versus heel because NXT is kind of off the rails as far as they don't stick to your main face versus yeah, heel. Yeah, NXT kind of does what NXT wants. Darn right they do. And that's a. I think that's a big thing of why we like them so much because that's we a don't good know what's going to happen. Exactly. And then they always deliver on TakeOver. Speaking of delivering on TakeOver, we have Velveteen Dream. Velveteen Dream. He had a little uh, Canadian entrance. Yeah, that was... Uh, <laughs> I, it was I was actually uh, looking for Jacques Rougeau to come out and with the cattle prod and all that, but... Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm the big sports fan, so I actually cared more about the uh, Raptors' oh, little inclusion boy. there. But, you know, Toronto is a little sucking up for mm. Velveteen Dream, but whatever. Uh, Toronto <laughs> Raptors suck. They broke yeah. my buck's heart, man. They did. I was there Ouch. live for it. Uh, he ended up getting the win <laughs> over Pete Dunne and Roderick Strong. Once again, Undisputed Era fell short. Right. I, now, again, I was actually surprised because Velveteen's had a good long run. I thought that uh, if— he was going to lose a title. SummerSlam weekend was, you know, the opportune moment. Yeah, uh, and obviously in a triple threat, you know, he won't even have to be pinned. Right, they could have protected him. And I really like the addition of Pete Dunne. I like the dark horse kind of thing going on there, and Pete Dunne's a crazy awesome talent. Yeah, I like the idea of him just kind of showing up wherever. Wherever, yep, and and causing havoc wherever he goes. And honestly, he doesn't even, like, need an explanation. It's Pete Dunne. Like, if he showed up on Raw next week and, yep. you know, would you, anyone... It'd be really... all right. All right. Bring it on. Let's see <laughs> what like, happens. Sweet. Let's do it. Yeah. Put him in Ricochet on. Exactly. Hey, that'd be pretty good. Oh, yeah. I like uh, the fact that, first of all, Velveteen Dream retained, so he's going to keep his title. He's one of the other guys, I think, FS1 or NXT, whatever. They were kind of cementing right. him as a player. Yeah. And uh, we just got the new 2K20 commercial, and I could be wrong about this, but I think he was the only NXT... I, in the commercial? So I thought yeah. that was a big ringing endorsement also. Yeah, I that was pretty cool to see him in that trailer, um, knowing that you know he's achieved that, that status. Yeah, real quickly, we actually had talked about that, if you remember, a few months ago, the commercial with all the legends and all-stars and stuff. And right, right. I want to see more outtakes. I, I want to see <laughs> Stone Cold and Hogan staring right. down and something I'm sure Heyman's up to no good as usual. Oh, of course not, yeah. I he had that look on that. his face. <laughs> <laughs> he always does. Yeah. Um, up next, uh, Shayna Baszler. No surprise, she just wins a takeover. That's what she does. Yep. She uh, defeated Mia Yim by submission, even with a bad arm. But yeah, that was. I, I thought it was a decent match. It uh, maybe like the rest of the crowd, I was kind of burned out at this point. Um, but... Yeah, not a real good spot. <clears throat> they they call this the death slot. Sometimes it's right. after a hot triple threat match with obviously those three: Roderick Strong, Pete Dunne, and Velveteen Dream, and then yeah. it's before the main event. Right. So you know people are kind of gearing up and almost like saving their breath type thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, you mentioned with the hurt. Uh, Shayna Baszler being hurt. I'd also mention she was not uh, with her goons this time. Yeah, she was alone. That was interesting. Jim had taken them out in the week's buildup. That was kind of the whole her going street. That was kind of her little thing is she had to resort to dirty tactics to win. Right. And then Baszler still won. And it still didn't work. <laughs> right. So So I would say a little disappointing, but in the end, I did expect Baszler to win. So I kind of saw that, too, and I think going back to the whole FS1 thing, I think maybe she might be the woman that they're going to be touting as 
look what we got here, you know. Because, I mean, she is known in the MMA community, and FS1 is known for having lots of MMA content. Yeah, I've seen it where uh, she's like, this is what Ronda Rousey is supposed to be, just the heel, the right. take no nonsense. Because, you know, for most of her run, Ronda was smiling and oh yeah, giggling and stuff. And, like, this is Baszler. Like, this is what Rousey was in the UFC. Right. Kind of the Mike almost, Tyson knock you out type thing. I almost wonder if they had to change... Rhonda's storyline because she just couldn't stop smiling. <laughs> I think she mentioned that where she'd get on the entrance ramp and just couldn't help it. Right. I mean, you could tell too because she'd come out being all angry and then all of a sudden, bing. <laughs> um, th- it wasn't at this point, but uh, Matt Riddle and Killian Dane did have a brawl. They did, right? Take over. <laughs> if you remember, a few weeks ago we talked about this. Matt Riddle was actually going to get the title match here. But after the uh, excellent match at the last takeover, they went with one more rematch for Cole yeah. uh, over Gargano. So they went one more, and I don't know if it's imminent, but it seems like Gargano is, you know, I, there's not too much more to do after yet another loss. Right. Uh, speaking of that loss, two out of three falls. Adam Cole, still NXT champion. What a match. What a match. I love just every second of it. I was trying to predict maybe which way it could go. I was thinking maybe the other guy would win each other, you know, like they would win the opposite fall or whatnot. Yeah, I thought for sure Gargano was going to win the, the wrestling match. Wrestling, right. his nickname, and yep. he would beat the heel straight up, and then obviously the heel would find some cheap way to win. Right. And then the barbed wire steel cage. <laughs> oh, man. I mean. Once I, you saw that hammer, you knew. <laughs> <laughs> you, knew Triple, you knew Triple H was smiling as that came down. <laughs> yeah, I love the fact that uh, not only did Cole win, but I like the post-match. Uh, where it did seem like Gargano also got his respect. Right, absolutely. So they each got something out of it. Cole retains any, um, I mean, any idea who's next or what? For Cole? Yeah. I mean, Riddle seems like the the obvious choice. Um, oh, boy, I'm trying to think now. Who it, have they pushed lately? <laughs> the Velveteen Dream. <laughs> yeah, but he's holding on North All the America, titles. Right? Just get, give them all. Get them um, all. I mean, if they want to do a, a tease in the break or whatnot, you know, Roddy Roddy would be a good guy to go up against Cole in some of those epic clashes. Yeah, I would think almost, you know, all four of those guys having single matches against each other could work. But um, oh, it didn't seem like there was anything teased of a breakup, even though Cole was the only one to win his title match. Right, right. So I would say they stick together. And again, kind of the FS1 thing, it seems like they could definitely... Uh, you know, have the undisputed era with Cole holding the title kind of as like a centerpiece to promos or commercials or whatever. I love the match, and a uh, little controversy came out of this pay-per-view. Uh-oh. Um, <laughs> well, it wasn't a pay-per-view, a takeover, whatever you want to call it. Um, so Triple H was kind of, did you see this part on his conference call? No, no, I did not. When he was asked about um, how could you have this match, when Vince just said they're not about blood and guts. Right. Did you see this? No, I did not. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to give the guy's name, but he writes for, I would argue, one of the top two or three websites. Been writing for 20, 25 years. No, it's not Meltzer, but he's he's right <laughs> up there. Right, okay. So not Dave Meltzer, so he's clean on this one. But uh, And basically Triple H, he completely just buried this guy on the oh. conference call live. And then uh, pretty much just buried him and said, tell me what we did that we didn't do every other week. Right. We had kendo sticks and we had a chair. And then the guy was like, well, well, you had blood. And then he's like, tell me where we had intentional blood. And we did that, you know, obviously referring to, you know, Dustin Rhodes and Cody. Right. He never mentioned it, but obviously you knew what that what he was talking about. And then the guy's like, well, you didn't. And he's like, so tell me now where the blood came from. And he's like, well, there was some blood on Cole's back. And then he's like, <laughs> really? This is what you... And he's like, you guys, you guys in your conspiracy theories, you're digging way too far for the, with this stuff, and there's nothing there. Right. And he started raising his voice. You could tell he was joking with it, but just completely shut the guy down. He's like, well, you had barbed wire. He goes, tell me where we ever used the barbed wire. Right. And the guy's like, well... Well, well um... He's like, <laughs> he's like, we never used it. Just because we had it, it meant you had to stay inside the steel cage. Right, right. Anyway, I thought it was pretty great. Just completely buried this guy. Good and... for him. <laughs> Nicely done. Good for him. And yeah, well and done. he didn't like attack the quote unquote internet, but he did kind of go after like guys. There's not always a big story and a big you know competition. Again, he didn't mention AEW, but 
And then right. um, the funny part but is they're not gonna. Well, yeah, right. When the guy started, <laughs> he started to respond, but his connection was breaking up. Uh huh. And then <laughs> I think the person hosting the call was like, "Well, we we can't. You know, you're breaking up. We're gonna go to the next call." And then Triple H was like. I think he was saying, I'm wrong, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so that was pretty great. So on the whole, NXT TakeOver, did it deliver once again? Absolutely it did. It does always. It always does. If we were ranking them, if we want to get a tad bit negative here, I would say that uh, oh. it would probably be on the lower end of the TakeOvers. Yeah, it wasn't as uh, vibrant and crazy as some of the other ones, but, I mean, it's still... You know, it gave SummerSlam something to live up to. Yeah, I mean, it's NXT TakeOver, so even the bottom, you could argue, is better than half the main roster. Right. <laughs> oh, wow. Just saying. So, as I open water, uh, do you want to move over to SummerSlam now? I mean, that seems like the next logical step, doesn't it? <laughs> it does, but we're not very logical here sometimes. Well, you know, I'll just uh, keep yapping so you can get a drink of water and, you know, wet there's, your whistle a little there's bit. There's not a lot of foresight sometimes. Yeah. Well, I mean, foresight is a gift, you know. That's something that has to be, you know, you can't earn that. You can't buy that. You got to. By the way, I love this water. If you listened to me two weeks ago, <laughs> talk on my own for 40 minutes. <laughs> there were points where I was literally just, like, rasping and, like, gasping to breathe. I don't know yeah, if you... Yeah, got, you got to prepare, man. You got to you gotta take some honey beforehand. Some honey? Yeah, honey coats the throat. That's My good. girl? Oh. Singers do... Oh, oh okay. Boy. Okay, so I was going to say, two weeks ago, I didn't have a drink. Last week, though, did, I, I did take a few swigs yeah. in between, because, man, it gets rough. Like, just imagine talking as much as I do. You know, there is a pause button. There is a I'm pause button. You don't want to know my technology on my laptop. Though. I really don't. You're no, right. I'd probably it, cry. <laughs> Make a grown man cry. I mean, what I got is caveman stuff, so I can only imagine what you're going on with. Oh, man. Cheap plugs, man. Cheap plugs. So <laughs> we kick off SummerSlam. Uh, surprisingly, Becky Lynch, Natalia. That was surprising. I was. Uh, I think we were texting just beforehand. I was calling for Ricochet and AJ Styles to kick it off. But... Yeah, and uh, the way that match went, which I'll get to in a bit, not too positive on that one but the way that went i'm guessing it was a good decision but you know thinking of the title matches the raw women's honestly was not the one at all i could have seen even the universal title match i mean that opened wrestlemania right so right i could have even seen that before you know this but either way becky lynch over natalia raw women's champion yeah i kind of figured that was going to happen natalia got a nice little pop i was expecting more of the booze like a la edge intercontinental title <clears throat> yes yes i was expecting that and uh, we got it uh, 24 hours later. <laughs> but, yeah, right. <laughs> uh, people were kind of surprised by that. I was not. Uh, that kind of was something I, for, well, foresight, whatever. I, I, I saw that coming, unfortunately, for oh, Natalia. Yeah. I mean, I mean, we're kind of fast-forwarding to the next night. But, you know, bringing up the dad stuff, the family again. I'm surprised Bret Hart didn't walk down to her. And right. Canadian flag. <laughs> I mean, she was holding up. I'm just like. She was trying. You know, she lays it on a little thick sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Well, but she follows you on Twitter. But she does. <laughs> I'm not sure about any more. <laughs> I should check that. Check that out, yeah. But anyway, Becky Lynch retains, which we'll get to the next night on Raw where that led to. So the second match, um, this is, uh, I think, uh, I don't want to say a mistake, but you know, looking back how the next three matches went, I'm not sure this should have happened here, but Goldberg over Dolph Ziggler. Yeah. I mean, maybe they just wanted to get out of the way. Maybe Goldberg had a bedtime to get to. Well, who knows? Uh, but, yeah, oh I mean, boy. that was ex that went exactly how I pictured it was going to go. Except for the end, I didn't expect uh, Dolph to keep running his mouth. Yeah, there's a story that his contract may be up. I don't believe that because they always have stories on Ziggler's contract status. Right. And nobody ever knows. And They're nobody ever knows. No, they just guess on it. But, uh, yeah, Goldberg obviously won. A few <clears> surprising <throat> kicks first. That was right. kind of cool. But, obviously, spear jackhammer, this kind of went how it, uh, you know, how we all expected. And then, obviously, Ziggler <laughs> was like, you can't beat me again or you got lucky. And right. Goldberg delivers a few more spears just for to get his payday yeah, in there. get in there. It's make pretty up, good. Make up for the poor performance from the last outing. Yeah, he just did an interview. I read this actually like an hour ago, and I think it was with Booker T. I don't know if uh, you saw it or if you want to look up some, <laughs> if you want to look up some of the quotes. But basically, he just said, you know, the ref asked him like 15 times, "Are you okay? Are you okay?" And he said each time he answered differently, and uh, he admitted that yeah, he probably ran into the post a little too much. Yeah, uh, with the uh, misspeared of the Undertaker match, and he was out on it. 
And then he said the people that doubted him about lifting up Undertaker, he said, look, you know, basically he was pointing at his history. Like, he can lift anyone up. Yeah. You know, there's the clips of the Giant. I know he was younger and all that, but, like, there was no problem. Obviously, he got knocked loopy. and Well, maybe don't bang your head into a steel door that before too. you have to go and make decisions. Yeah, I don't. I didn't notice if he did that this time. He may have. I, you know what? I'm thinking he didn't. I'm thinking he stopped doing it. Or maybe they just put a padded wall like. He's, oh yeah, maybe he's got a pillow in his dressing room. <laughs> For his bedtime after. You right? know, bedtime. Right. You got. You gotta. Gotta get your naps in. I'm a big proponent of naps. <laughs> I am the opposite, but that's a different podcast for a different time. So up next, we had AJ Styles, still United States champion over Ricochet. Yeah. Um. Kind of surprised by that one. I, I honestly thought Ricochet was going to get one over, but it does kind of strengthen the club. It does kind of centralize AJ as a major player to come. So uh, good match, but, yeah, interesting. Do you have any other thoughts on this before I completely rip this match apart? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> All right, I'm not going to rip it apart. Yeah, yeah, go for it. But this was my disappointment of the night. I didn't even care, honestly, about the winner. I know that you know you're not supposed to say that, but... You know, I would have been fine with either winner, right? Right, exactly. Right, it would have been fine with me. I yep. wouldn't have minded. Um, I mean, this is what, third, fourth time these times they had a bunch of matches by now? Right. You know, they should have been able to put it together by now. <laughs> 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 I don't know what these two were doing. I thought the finish was excellent, if you remember. He went to the top rope, did the thing, AJ caught him in the yeah. Styles. Styles clash. That yeah. was incredible. Yeah. That's what we should have saw the first. The match was 13 minutes. We should have saw that for 10 out of the 13 minutes. And it felt like the first, you know, 12 and a half minutes were a whole lot of nothing until Ricochet went to the top rope, did his wacky cadoodle flip, AJ caught him. Again, incredible, incredible, amazing athleticism. I could never even dream of doing anything even close to that. But the match, no thanks. And this is where uh, we'll get to the next match, too. But this is where I wonder if the crowd by that time was kind of, I don't want to say tired, but after the Goldberg stuff where they kind of worn a little like, okay, let's go to the concession stand type thing. Maybe. So that's where maybe that could have been held off a little bit, but Hmm. it just felt like the crowd even never got back into it. If you watched it, maybe go back and watch it again. You'll see what I mean. And I say this as praise because we both know AJ Styles and Ricochet are capable of a lot more. Right, right. Um, So that's why I say it hmm. as a compliment to them. Yeah. And the same thing happened, I thought, the next night with Ricochet and Elias on Raw. Not quite sure what happened, but those two didn't seem to ever be on the same page. And, you know, Ricochet got the win. It was obviously used to kind of build them back up. Right. Absolutely. He's got to get, you know, strength up in there somehow. But a title match, SummerSlam, arguably the top, what, two or three pay-per-views, if you want to put Rumble above it. AJ Styles, Ricochet. I mean, I'm sorry if I had too high of expectations, but... I mean, they definitely weren't having high expectations. You know, those two guys, you know, they have a that rep- reputation of putting on classic matches, so we were going to hopefully see something that, you know, was going to wow us. Yeah, I saw that AJ Styles is 42 and did just sign a big contract, right. so maybe... You know, I'm not saying he's taking it easy, but now he can kind of relax and be done with the classics kind of. Like now he's going to ride this part of his career out type thing, kind of like Randy Orton's been doing. But <laughs> And I don't say that as an insult, <laughs> but, you know, he's going to kind of know what he can do. Right, right. And not go out there and do 450 flips every night. You know, he doesn't need to do that. Right. Kinda like Jeff Hardy, I always say, he doesn't need to jump off ladders anymore. He's beyond that. Yeah, but he just keeps doing it. <laughs> well, not now. Well, when he returns, I bet he will. Oh, you know it. He's going to be the next 24-7 champion, by the oh, way. yeah. So. I can see that. <laughs> Hold that for the rest of his career. And Matt Hardy will continue not being on TV and giving Twitter promos, but whatever. So up next He's we had... to mow the lawn, man. Yeah, you don't understand, you know. It's hard to be Matt It's hard Hardy. being Matt Hardy. Right. So anyways, uh, Bailey over Ember Moon. Uh, obviously, I was rooting for Moon, but yeah, you were fully expected uh, Bailey to win here, and I didn't even care much that she lost in ten minutes. My disappointment was kind of like Mia Yim; the crowd just never gave her anything. They really didn't. They they were just kind of buzzed out by this point. They were definitely buzzed out. That's a it's a good phrase. Again, it goes back to the Goldberg thing. If maybe they shouldn't have had that, because. Go back and watch it. They were nuts for the first uh, Becky Lynch, and then obviously Goldberg, and then from there it just kind of whittled away for a little bit. Yeah. Bailey retained. Again, no surprise there, but I was hoping for a little bit more out of Ember Moon and Mia Yim, but I think both those kind of uh, 
just kind of came and went. Right. And they may be done with those already, which is disappointing. Um, up next, we had Kevin Owens. He's not quitting. He defeated Shane McMahon. Yep, took him right out. That was that was a pretty uh, wackadoo match there. Yeah, I mean, Elias and, you know, Owens used a low blow, which yeah. uh, right away I was like, oh, no, they're going to bring this up. He used a low blow. He couldn't just win clean. He had to low blow Shane first. I mean, but didn't you want to see him get kicked square in the, <laughs> you know? Well, I guy kind of earned it. <laughs> oh, he's definitely earned it. So uh, not a whole lot to that. We will get to it in a little bit, but the feud seems to be continuing. Continuing up, on. Up next, I wrote this on Twitter live during the show. Charlotte Flair and Trish Stratus, I think they saved SummerSlam. This show was not in the right direction at this point. It was heading downward, and the crowd was too. Charlotte Flair, though, Trish Stratus, saved them, brought them back to life. 16 minutes, clean win. Charlotte over Trish. Yep, I kind of expected that. Uh, Trish saying that that was going to be her last match. You go out on go out on your shield, but she definitely proved she still has the skills. You know, she's not retiring because she has to. <laughs> no, she uh, she busted out a few moves in the beginning. It reminded me of The Rock when he teamed with Cena in his first match in like six or seven oh, yeah. or eight years yeah. against the Awesome <clears throat> Truth. The first like thirty seconds was basically Rock hitting a bunch of like chain wrestling moves, right? And then he did his kip up, I think, and then the Madison Square Garden chanted, "You still got it." It was basically just Rock saying, "Look, I'm not just gonna stand here and do basic moves. I've actually yeah. been training and getting ready for this." So. Right. I thought that was cool. You mentioned it. So right now on the spot, yes or no, is this Trish's final match? I mean, you know, they there's a saying in the business, never say never. But yeah. um, I could see her coming out of retirement for one-offs and whatnot, but I don't think she's going to have a consistent in-ring career. Yeah, she's been doing one-offs. She returned for that Raw to team with Cena against right. Santino, and I think it was Beth. She obviously did Evolution last year. She was in the first Rumble for the women. So she's been doing those. I think still that Alexa Bliss match people wanted to see. I know I certainly did. That would be cool. But again, SummerSlam in Toronto. You can't really write a better ending to lose to arguably the top star of this generation, Charlotte. Yipper. So I thought that was cool. She had the great moment. And uh, I thought it was, I don't want to say emotional, but there's a video on YouTube. I don't know if you saw it of Trish interviewed after the match. I did not see it. Um, she just talked about, you know, how she's been training and busting her butt and all this. And she had, you know, worked out at midnight and was a mom throughout this all. And right. she was training and everything about that. And to prove that you can do anything regardless of age, regardless of what you're doing with your life and all this emotional stuff. And then she kind of paused and then said, while she was training for this match, she said it suddenly hit her that it wasn't a comeback match. It was a farewell match. Oh. So I thought it was a very nice moment. She got all teary at it. It was a very nice interview. So I would say it's her final match, whether it's, you know, pops up at the Rumble, whatever. Right. You know, like you say, you go out on your back, you go out on your shield, and losing to the top star of this generation clean in your hometown, I mean, that's pretty much that what it's That was a all. storybook ending right there. It's pretty much what it's about. And real quickly, um, I purposely skipped the kickoff show because, let's be honest, who cares? But... Edge, Toronto. I saw that. I actually had to catch video because I, too, skipped the kickoff show. What in the world? Why was he giving a spear to Elias? Well, I mean, he kind of deserved it. You know, from what I, from the video that I saw, the guy was, you know, trash-talking Toronto, and you don't do that. Elias always deserves it. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah, absolutely does. What was interesting is that um, I had thought that Edge was on the no physicality list for the longest time. Yeah, there, there's a story that he um, like begged Vince to do it, but the, another report said, no, they were cleared. He's cleared for you know a move here and there, Yeah, kind of like Stone Cold with his stunners. But there's also now talk of, oh, is Edge the next to do the Saudi Arabia show in a few months? Oh, my God. I is this not. leading to that? I, I hope <laughs> not, too. I don't think he's cleared for any of that. And yeah, I think Well, he did had... he ever get the surgery he needed, or did he just decide it wasn't worth it? I don't know. Did Sting ever get his? Because I still think Sting and uh, Undertaker to my, is happening. <laughs> to my knowledge, no, Sting did not. I know that uh, after Edge retired, that he he said it was fine as long as he was you know moving. It was when he was stationary was when it was a problem. So he may have just opted to not. 
Well, we'll get to that, but Sting actually is a name announced for the 20th anniversary of SmackDown Fox debut. Sting, I don't even know if he's been on SmackDown. I don't think they so. They announced Undertaker, Goldberg, Ric Flair, Trish, Lita, Sting. Wow, that's because... <laughs> and Sting. <laughs> that's because that's going to be their debut. Right, that'll so be their debut. They're in, pulling out everybody. In L.A., there was a story today that The Rock has been asked to appear... Of course. I mean, it's his show. I, I, I know. It's not even news. You know, of course he's been. I think Hogan's a, announced, too. This was the Raw reunion that Fox wanted, but USA right. was like, no. We no, need we it. want one. We <laughs> Give us one first. Um, so that'll be interesting. But We've had him longer than you. Uh, yeah, please. Give us the reunion. <laughs> so, um, of course the Rock's been asked. I'm sure he's asked yeah. to appear every week. <laughs> every, yeah, I'm sure for, he's been asked for the last 20 years. And I tease this on Twitter, but somebody else has been asked to appear, but uh, I'm not sure. Oh? Yeah. Uh. <laughs> Come on. You, you teased it now. You got to spit it out. Uh, let's just say he's in the Hall of Fame. <sighs> Come on. He's been involved with Vince McMahon at a WrestleMania. Nothing yet? I mean, maybe. Hmm. He's SmackDown on Fox. Okay. All right. Now you lost me. <laughs> Fox, right. you know, that they have some cable news channels that may involve this person. But anyways, so Kofi Kingston, we're, we're moving on. <laughs> oh, boy. Kofi Kingston is still your WWE champion. Yes, he is. And obviously this was because of a double countout with Randy Orton. I mean, it's intriguing, and it definitely shows kind of the more vicious side of the, the rivalry that Kofi could play into um but i, I kind of like that they left it open any other thoughts before i crush oh this? my god <laughs> this guy here he said he puts his name on a show when he can just trash everything all right all right <laughs> all what right. did you hate this time justin First of all, I'm as positive as they come. Remember 50 reasons to love? So I don't want to hear this negative. You know, you say that, but you can't keep banking on that if you trash everything after that. I haven't. I enjoyed this show. Okay. You just hated every wrestling match. <laughs> you love the show. You hated the wrestling. I get it. Okay. Oh, boy. No. <laughs> I hated the decision. Uh, Kofi should have won clean here. That's what I was going to say. Okay. Why? I didn't like the double count. I understand they're building, you know, it's going to be a rematch. You know, yeah. obviously you use a crappy ending, and then you get to pay off the next month. I get it. I understand, obviously, what they're doing. I'm sure it'll be some gimmick at Clash of Champions, whatever. But you use your shows and your B shows to build up your major shows. Yeah, but weren't you just complaining about how Kofi doesn't have any storyline that we can get our teeth into, that, you know, he needs a, a good, well-written yada, yada, yada? Yeah, and this was. I enjoyed the build. I thought it was great, even right. though Orton spent the past two weeks on vacation. <laughs> so, you know, so this you I th get to the big match, and it still has to go on. Yeah, I thought the the payoff here was Kofi winning clean, and uh, I don't know if we'll get to it on SmackDown, but uh, I'm not sure if this was the right decision because I don't know if you watch SmackDown or not, but uh, Orton ended up uh with the Revival attacking the New Day, so I'm guessing Revival New Day will be the SmackDown or whatever tag team champ they are for Clash of Champions because right. all the titles will be defended. And Orton laid them all out, and Revival and all this stood tall and stuff. And Orton gave Kofi an RKO. Okay. Okay, okay. pretty basic. Yeah. And you'd expect the crowd to be booing, right? <laughs> they were cheering like crazy. They started chanting one more time. <laughs> So oh I'm not sure the sending did Kofi many favors, and I could bring up his Ziggler and Owens and whatever other matches, but we will move on from there. So up next, probably the highlight of the show, arguably after the main event, the Fiend entrance. Yes. Wow. I was. I would think I was more excited for the Fiend and Finn Balor than I was for the main event. Yeah, I was actually more excited to uh, see the entrance, and I wanted to just see how it would go. Right, right. We talked I was about very this curious. for months. Yeah, and you know, Finn was never going to win. The match was barely three and a half minutes. You know, right, that was never going to happen. But what a three and a half minutes! <laughs> the entrance—that's probably like ten minutes. Total. I mean, I, and I love the fact that they used his old theme from the singer of a band called the Jesus and Mary Chain, and just rocked it out. This uh, Code Orange, I think, was the name of the. Yeah, band. I was going to say I couldn't remember who it was, but. The theme is very, I don't even, like, creepy. Type. It's awesome. <laughs> it is just awesome. I mean. It is awesome, and the match was what it was. Honestly, we don't really care. I like that he had his mask on. Right. I thought if he took it off, it'd be like, oh, it's Bray Wyatt. You know? <laughs> right. I read somewhere that um, 
he technically introduced us to the fiend back in 2015. Uh, oh, gosh. We'd have to go back and do some research. But what I really dig, Here we go. and the the entrance theme kind of solidified that, is that they're keeping kind of like it is the same guy. You know how sometimes when they change characters, they try to like completely ignore their past. I Husky like with, Harris. Right, but I like how they they've kept the Bray Wyatt theme intertwined throughout each one of his personas. I like the Bray Wyatt Lantern. That was <laughs> something else, man. <laughs> uh, that was um, actually YouTube or WWE had it edited out of the YouTube video. Oh, really? But I guess now they're selling stuff for it. <laughs> I mean, it, you put I, I that thought, up on there and you're going to make a million dollars. Yeah, right when I saw that, I knew there'd be complaints or something would happen. Yeah, I and mean, it, it did look graphic. <laughs> the Fiend did have his, like, there was like a box thing at shop. Did you see this story? No. Yeah, there's like a commercial for it where he literally yells like stickers and he's all excited about this little like fiend box set that they were selling. Okay. And it was limited edition. They had like 500 of them. Yeah. And I think they sold for like 40, 50 bucks or something. And it okay. sold out. No, there was like 300 made or something. Yeah, 300 made. And I think they were like 40 or 50 bucks. Whatever. It doesn't matter. And they announced it on sale at shop. Yeah. And then they aired this creepy Bray White commercial. Again, he gets all excited, right. Firefly Funhouse, and he's yelling, like, <laughs> stickers, and then, kitties, guess what else is in here? And it's just, you know, ridiculous. And then it's sold out in, like, three hours. Nice. And, you know, just in your head, you do the math, it's, you know, twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000, you know, in a few hours. Like, that's Boom. almost pays probably someone's salary well, <laughs> in you, a few now hours. Now you know why they're a billion-dollar publicly traded company. Yeah, so also there was a story that all of his stuff at SummerSlam was selling <laughs> out. And yeah. obviously the crowd mm-hmm. was chanting, you know, for his entrance. And, oh, yeah. And then afterwards he disappeared. <gasps> and if we are going to have one small negative, he not only disappeared, he also disappeared from the shows after. He was not on Raw or Smack. I, I did read, though, that that was intentional because they want to keep appearances by him special, which you got to do. Yeah, I did see uh, the website is advertising him for Raw, but not like officially, like one of those arena like right. listings or whatever. And I hope that <clears throat> is what happens. Um, yeah, they need to keep that a, a special thing. Not necessarily like Brock or Goldberg, you know, where they're every few months. But... Brock's not special. <laughs> Don't kid yourself. <laughs> Notice I said once every few months. <laughs> Brock was the champ every few months. <laughs> Brock was garbage for the entire time. Oh, oh boy. So, um... <laughs> Garbage. So garbage. um I'm glad that he is gonna be kept special. I would have liked a little <laughs> Are you still on this? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I would have liked, you know, a little bit of a follow up. <laughs> Maybe Finn like saying I gotta go away for a while or right. something, but I mean it, it's like it almost never happened. <clears throat> and I thought, you know, he was hot, hot, hot coming out of the event. Right. And now it's going to be a week later, maybe two weeks, three weeks, you know, who knows. But again, it's Clash of Champions, so unless he's doing a title match, I'm not sure what. Well, you'll never know where he'll show up. Maybe he'll insert himself into a title match or, you know, he he can do it. And if it's well written and he's got, you know, uh, one thing I want to know is like how much of this is Bray Wyatt. Because if this is all him, dude is a genius. And if he's allowed to just play, we're in for some real treats, I think, coming up. Yeah, I would hope by now he's kind of given a little bit of freedom. He should be. You know, I think he's one of those guys that probably can kind of get direction, bullet points, and just kind of go out there. And go, yeah. So I hope that's what happens. I hope he stays special. I hope the entrance, I hope they don't kind of tinker with that. I thought everything about it was great. You know, the match, who who cares? And um, (laughs) if Finn comes back as the demon, then we have a little bit of Then we got something. Little battle there, and we'll get to this next. But as long as Seth Rollins is champion, you know Bray Wyatt, whether he's Raw SmackDown, whatever. Uh, Bray Wally, Bray Wyatt, not Bray Wally. Wally? <laughs> okay, Bray Wally. What uh, have you been drinking? <laughs> you don't want to know. Uh, that would be a great feud, and you know, I'm not saying he'd win the title, but you know, would anyone really argue that? No, I mean that would be that'd be pretty crazy. Definitely seeing the Fiend go after the title like that. That would definitely be crazy. So speaking of crazy, we had our main event. Brock Lesnar entered as champion. He exited without the championship. Yes. I, yes. <laughs> I will point out, Paul Heyman never gave his patented spoiler, so that was something. And Seth Rollins left with the title. What'd you think of this match? I was very happy to see Brock lose. It was nice to see his head get stomped into the mat. It was entertaining. <laughs> but as we were talking off air, it was the same Brock Lesnar match that we've always seen. Guy gets a little bit of offense, Brock throws him around for a while, and then we have an ending. The only difference on this one was that the ending, Brock lost. 
Yes. Finally. All right. Before I debate that, I will say we're on the same page. We we both. (laughs) No. Brock's advertised for the 20th anniversary of SmackDown. He's advertised. (laughs) So he won't be gone too long. But, anyways. Give him the cactus. um, Cactus Jack? Oh, there I'd be fine with that. <laughs> here's what here's what I don't mind is if Brock Lesnar comes back and is like a special enforcer or the monster that just causes havoc every now and then when he walks in or whatever. Just get him away from the title. He he doesn't need to be in that spot. Well, I think he's done with the universal title. I'll say that. So I. Th- <laughs> I think this match was awesome. I loved it. Rollins with even a splash to the outside, which looked like he completely crushed his own knees on the oh, yeah. outer edge of the table. <laughs> and uh, get ready to take a shot because Holly, my girlfriend, worked <laughs> all day Sunday and came home in the middle of the, well, not home, came to my place. Oh, boy. <laughs> I'm in trouble for that Keep one. going. She came to my place. In the middle of the show, right? didn't really care, did her thing, whatever, relaxed after 12 hours, whatever it was, she worked Sunday. <laughs> and, you know, wasn't paying attention. I was telling her about, you know, The Fiend and all this and Trish just lost and all this stuff. She came in, didn't necessarily care. Yeah. Uh, Seth Rollins comes out. That's her That's her boy toy. But oh, boy. Uh, <laughs> she put her phone down, everything away, done. She paid attention and... Again, she gets into it every near fall, everything. Yes, yes. <laughs> and, you know, cheered when Rollins won. So, yeah. whatever they were doing as the company to build this story up with the ribs, right? It worked. It definitely worked. And speaking of the ribs, when Lesnar pretty much picked them up and whipped By them the tape, around. Yeah, yeah. And then he threw them. And then for added measure, he walked over and quick stomped on them. Yeah. She goes, <gasps> You know, she was not too thrilled with that move on Boy, the she rib. She was really into it, huh? She was into it, and I'm going to point this out. I don't know if you caught this, but do you remember what happened in the beginning when Lesnar went for a German suplex? Didn't uh, Seth flip out of it? He did. Now, do you remember what happened when Lesnar went for it like 10 seconds later? Then he got he hit him with it, didn't he? He flipped again. Okay. So then he beat him down a little bit more, and then, again, a small little part I'm not sure anyone really noticed— but then when Brock went for him again, this time he bridged it and kept his wrist collapsed around. Did you catch that? No. Okay, well, this time then he hit Oh, him. and then he did three of them. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so that, that was, I like the word psychology, but Rollins had been flipping out of him. So this time he wasn't letting go. Okay. So the little, okay, whatever. Screw Brock Lesnar. Maybe a little thing that only I caught. Um, but I thought that was very cool that, okay, well, Rollins is flipping out of him. This time I ain't letting go. I'm going to yeah. hold on to him. So. Are, you, are you trying to, like... <laughs> point out his psychology just to make us all I'm not, not I don't think that was him. You know, I'm not saying that was him. I'm sure someone told him. Or I'm sure it was Heyman or whoever. I thought Heyman did a great job also because during the match when Lesnar was laying it in, Heyman was literally just yep, sitting yep. there smiling. Heyman can sell a match. I mean, that guy. <laughs> I thought it was great. Yeah. And there's also uh, some WWE.com behind-the-scenes SummerSlam pictures, and there's one of... Uh, uh, Brock giving Triple H the fist bump before going out there. I thought that was cool. Ooh. And then there's also Heyman like doing a head-to-head kind of stare down with uh, Goldberg, kind of like him pumping him up because Heyman's a fan of Goldberg also. Right. So I thought that was cool. Any other thoughts on this match before I praise it? <laughs> nah. I'm just glad Brock lost, man. i just done seeing him being a champion. That's all. Okay, I agree with you there. As much as I'm a fan of him, again, I had Rollins. I thought that he was the rightful winner. I thought that's what this was building the past two weeks. And we'll get to it in a little bit, but Stone Cold put Seth Rollins over like a million bucks. DX did it a few weeks ago. Right. And Lesnar <clears throat> beat down Rollins two weeks in a row, pretty vicious beatdowns. Rollins wasn't going to lose here. No, definitely not. You know, you're I mean, not going to have Stone Cold, Triple H, all these people endorse him, and then have Rollins standing up for the company on Twitter and, like, waving right. the WWE flag. You know, this was his match. This was kind of his stamp. And as much as the crowd was kind of split, again, Lesnar in Canada, if you remember that little stuff, uh, the crowd went nuts for it, and Rollins won him over, and the next night he absolutely seemed like a champion. So now here's where I'm going to praise Brock Lesnar. So if you want to tune out for 30 seconds, that's fine. (laughs) Put your feet up, grab a drink, (laughs) take a shot. (laughs) All right. So you said that this was the same as his other matches, and you could argue that it is. But here's the thing about all of his matches. They're all great. So <laughs> No, they're not. They're it's, really, really not. It's kind of like the argument where people say, oh, every song by Creed is the same. <laughs> they are, and they're all awesome. So <laughs> Creed, you really want to die on that hill? We're dying on the Brock Lesnar hill. Creed, so, 
Creed had a class action lawsuit because people went to their concert, hated it so much that they sued the band to get their money back. So Creed is not the best (laughs) example. I'm not using an example. I'm using the fact that Brock Lesnar (laughs) against AJ Styles, against Daniel Bryan, against Finn Balor, his matches with Goldberg, and now Rollins, Samoa Joe you could throw in there. You can throw in the Fatal 4-Way with uh, Braun Strowman, Roman Reigns, and And Joe. Joe. I could argue, yeah, the Great Balls of Fire match. Right. You know, I could keep going (laughs) on and on. Even the Rollins opener with Mania I thought was exciting and great. And now, obviously, the SummerSlam main event. I'm not sure what else he has to do, but he's great. It's not Brock Lesnar, though. It's everybody else. Oh, of course. So, anyways. <laughs> yeah, Brock doesn't get any credit. He just shows up, throws people around, Okay. gets his check, and I'm not going to mention the Sable. Becky Lynch-Alicia Fox match from a few months ago. That was yeah. uh, Takes two to tangle. That's what I'm getting at. So, anyways, um, great match, great finish. I think Brock is done. Maybe not with Raw entirely, but I would think so. Universal title for sure. He's done. Heyman did the little no rematch thing, whatever. Right. I don't think it was necessary. I think it was done for. And a part of me does think it was just kind of for the money in the bank. Because if you remember the past two years, money in the bank, can you name them? Uh, let's see. We had Baron Corbin. That was two years ago. Yeah. And Last. then Strowman. Okay. And both of them were pretty bad and went yeah. absolutely nowhere. So a part of me does think, you know, they needed something big to get it back on track. Right. Brock Lesnar, whether you love him or hate him, obviously hate a him. big name. <laughs> I'll, I'll answer that one right now. Hate him. <laughs> love him or hate him. Hate him. And he cashed in and won. So it's kind of like, okay, we can kind of get back on track a little bit with the yeah. Money in the Bank thing and show that highlight. They're not going to be showing Baron Corbin highlights of the <laughs> Money in the Bank cash in or anything. King but, Corbin, no, I hope not. Uh, we will get to <laughs> we will get to the King of the Ring teaser. turn. Little teaser there, but uh, any closing thoughts on SummerSlam? Yeah, why are you writing your notes on a napkin? I um, mean, you're a grown man. You, you need a notebook, or you got a you got a perfectly good phone, but you got notes on a napkin. I, well, like usual, you're wrong. It's not a napkin. It's toilet paper. <laughs> that because that's so much better. <laughs> All right. So, what did you think of SummerSlam? I thought SummerSlam was great. I had a, I had enjoyed it. Um, like I said, I was actually able to watch it on a decent screen, so I enjoyed it even that much more. Yeah, cheap plug, but I wrote this in my 411mania.com column. I wrote that the best part about it was it didn't go 18 hours long. That was nice. <laughs> I mean, I got to play with our cat before bedtime like, and not have to stay up too late. So, I mean, that was kind of nice. Yeah, our time, I think it ended at, what, like 9.30? About 9.30, yeah, which was nice because I had to work at 4 in the morning. So Yeah, I was up after 4 this morning, and I'm running on fumes, and... I don't know how you do it. Usually I work a little later in the morning, but Dude, I just not that early. I just grind it, man. <laughs> just grind through it. Coffee. And remember, I'm not I don't take naps. So Coffee and C B D oil. <laughs> Is that a cheap plug? Is that a cheap plug right there? <laughs> no. All right. So I'm gonna name my quick little cheap plugs before moving on to a Miss Sasha Banks finally returning. So she finally returned. Enough with the cryptic tweets. Make yourself known. Yes, we will get to that in 30 seconds, so uh, that was a little teaser to keep you listening through this. You are listening to the 411 Foresight Wrestling Podcast on the one and only 411 Podcasting Network. You ready for me to name all these? Spotify, Stitcher, iTunes, Google Play, YouTube, and as I mentioned, 411mania.com. If you want the columns, you can read me there. If you want this, you can listen, subscribe, do all that great stuff. Steve, what do you got to plug? What do I got to plug? Well, we got the Resonant Complex debut album, North Avenue, is available anywhere digital music is sold. Uh, You can also stream it on Spotify, and you can catch out some videos on YouTube. Just search the Resonant Complex, and that'll take you to all your Resonant Complex needs. I need it all. Speaking of needing, I thought the women's division needed something. I talked about this past few weeks. Uh, Becky Lynch went from the main event of WrestleMania uh, against uh, Ronda Rousey to Lacey Evans to Natalia to kicking off the show. <laughs> I mean, yes, the the division needed something, and that brings me to Sasha Banks returning. Do do do! Legit boss time. I thought it was a awesome return, great Very moment. Good return. The uh, Canada crowd, as we kind of discussed, was ready to turn on Natalia. There, they were. Yeah, I have to say <laughs> the uh, uh, the Twitter Twitter page uh, WWE Creative Ish, the Creative Humor page. They when Sasha Banks came out, they went up and stated there was no joke that we could write that would do this moment any justice. <laughs> no, Natalia getting all sappy and then. 
boom. And I really liked how she went over to a little kid and gave her, you know, some merchandise yes. or whatever. Yep. And then not, what, two minutes later, just bam. Yeah, I loved it. Hug Natalia, uh, Natalia uh, Mouth, I love you. I could read those lips. And then Sasha pointed up, and then she did the whole little thing where she faked going to get a microphone, turned around, and smacked her, crowd went nuts. Yep, and what a good turn. I mean, I've bought it. I bought it just like the purple hair came flying out. Right? That was crazy. <laughs> now she's blue. I guess the her, the heel turn new character is changing hair colors. Well, yeah, that. And, you know, she had a little bit of a blue language on the outside they had to press the sensor button for. She got a little edgy yeah, there. And I think her merch was also blue. I think it's a black and blue shirt. I could oh, yeah. be wrong about that. Okay. But that was immediately up on the website right after. So Of course it was. Big surprise. I'm sure that's But it was good great. to see her back. Yeah, we're we're glad to have her back, and this led into Becky Lynch coming out, and we yep. got a brawl. And we had a brawl. I mean, the man and the boss. Yes. Here I, we go. I loved it. Hopefully it leads right to Clash of Champions. I understand sometimes you want to build things and kind of let them simmer for a few months, but right. not this. I say let's just go right to yeah, it. Yeah, they kind of need that firecracker. Let's just do it right away. Becky needs this. No more Lacey Evans crap. No more uh, Natalia promos. None of that stuff. Let's just get Sasha Banks and Becky. And I do wonder how long this has kind of been in the works because Becky's been, you know, she took a little shot at Sasha. I yep. think it was last week. Oh, yeah. So yeah. obviously they kind of knew something was coming on. And um, the cryptic post, it was song lyrics. Yeah. Okay, I didn't know if you caught on to this. Uh, I saw something about it, and, you know, she posted the last lyrics. The song was almost over. So right. her hiatus was ending soon, and then I think it was literally before she went out by a minute. Well, she was she was posting... All from the same song. Yeah, it was a oh. it was a whole song this time, and then that was clever. I think it was a minute before she went out. I think it was someone timed it. It was a minute before she posted the last lyrics, and then there she literally was. So I don't know if her husband backstage was posting it or if she literally right. had her phone in her hand. I mean, maybe. <laughs> and said, "I'll get this in ten I think minutes." I, I think I was because I was following along on Twitter as I was watching Ron. I, I think I actually saw that. I saw that posted up, and then bam, there she was. Yeah, I thought it was huh. great. Uh, the crowd went well nuts. Done. Awesome music. So, yeah, I I didn't. I I think it's a rap song, so I obviously have no clue or yeah, hip hop or <laughs> if it's if it's from you know this decade, I'm probably out of the loop. So I don't know if my new column is actually up yet. I wrote it two days ago about Sasha. Well, did you press the send button? <laughs> there is no send button, but yes, I I. Well, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> it's in the can, as I always say. I say it's in the can. So it's in the can whenever it's posted. But uh, I just kind of did a summary of, you know, what do you what do you think of these past four months? Is it just kind of she needed a break? Is it just kind of who cares? She's back. Um, I'm not really one to, to really judge or estimate, really. I mean, she was doing what she was doing. She had run for so long. You know, I mean, they deserve a break just like Finn Balor does. Roman Reigns deserves one every now and then. Um. You know, you can only run your body that hard for so long. And uh, so really, whatever she was doing, I hope that she got it, her head right. And now that she's back, she puts on some classic matches. Yeah, I hope this match is awesome. They had a match in NXT at a takeover. I remember. It was very good. A lot of people mentioned the Bailey ones. That was kind of the emergence of Becky Lynch, the... the Yes. Um, straight fire character. It was. After that, I think she was made, and then obviously they all got called up to the main roster. Yep. So I thought that was great, and like you, I'm just ready for them to go at it, and no point in wasting time. Yeah, S- just go out with a bang, man. <laughs> Bam. <laughs> yes, I think it'll be a great brawl. I'm not sure we get title change right away, but it won't surprise me at all. So up next we had uh, Braun Strowman. So Seth Rollins, and they did the whole AJ Styles thing with the OC. And uh, Braun Strowman helped Seth Rollins. Yeah, I saw that. Ricochet was out there too, but I'm not sure where he fits into this. But uh, Braun Strowman and Seth Rollins, if that's the way this goes, kind of out there a little bit? It's out there. It'll be if that's the way it's going. It'll be interesting to see how they book it, um, because we all know that Braun's going to be champion at some point. But I think that Seth probably deserves to hang on to it for a little while after you know overcoming such odds. Yeah, I would argue Braun maybe not getting the title at all, but ever know, ever is a long time. But I don't think from Seth. And I was just even gonna... Andre had it once. Eh, was that official though? Yes. 
I don't count it as official. It was. so Because he did win it. The ref <laughs> counted three, man. Which of the Hebners counted that one? <laughs> oh, wow. So I Danny think um, I was going to ask, who do you think holds it longer, Seth or Becky? Ooh. See, I think Sasha and you could argue Braun are both kind of nipping at the heels here a little bit, and you could even say The Fiend coming after Seth, or I could mention the stud Drew McIntyre, but I'm not sure about Becky Lynch and Seth. At some point, they're going to have to lose them. Yeah, definitely they are, but um, boy, I would almost see Becky holding on to it a little longer. Okay, all right, so she gets past Sasha? Because I think Seth gets past Braun, if that's the way this goes. Yeah, I I definitely see Seth going past Braun, but, I mean, it's just a matter of how, you know, Braun's going to get it eventually. I don't care what you say. He's going to get it eventually. (laughs) I don't care what you say. (laughs) Uh, uh, Speaking of getting it eventually, um, is Mysterio going to eventually get it together? He lost two straight falls to Andrade and seemed to need a little moment to himself. Right, and he, like, was at a loss for words. He just kept almost like he, you know, did he take a, mad shot to the head because he was just repeating himself over and over I mean, <laughs> that is true um my brother-in-law he he loves mysterio and it seems on a weekly basis either he tells me what happened on route or i tell him what happened and every time it's yeah he lost again <laughs> <laughs> yeah well i mean he's going against andrade you know these last ones and they're trying to put him over as this you know massive latino superstar so i mean yeah, I mentioned this even uh, a few months ago, but he came to the little WrestleMania viewing party we had, and he <laughs> was just devastated with Joe completely yeah, crushing him. Yeah, in like him. 90 seconds. And then, yeah, he left after. <laughs> yeah. Oh, did he really? Oh, wow. He didn't, you know, he's a casual fan, so he didn't really care too much about anything else. He came for Mysterio, and then he got 10 seconds of that, and then he yells, wow. oh, come on. Poor guy. I know. I feel bad. Every time Mysterio comes on, I'm like, he's going to lose again. He's one night out of the house without the new baby, and he gets 10 seconds of Rey Mysterio. And then even when he came out, I think it was, uh, was it against Ali or Dolph Ziggler or something? And then Ziggler came out and just destroyed him on SmackDown. Yeah. It was just like, this guy can't catch a break. So where do you think this is going with Mysterio? I mean, you know, they were teasing it before, and I don't know if they're still going to do it. I mean, there's there was that potential of bringing Dominic in uh, as, a, as a talent. But then again, you know, he's definitely nowhere near ready to have that kind of spotlight on him. Yeah, you're using the word talent there a little loosely. I mean, it's more of like, you know, contract type thing. <laughs> yeah, speaking of, um, well, here, I'll mention this real quickly. Elias is our new 24-7 champion. Yeah, yeah, he is. How about um, that? Are you still enjoying the 24-7 title? <laughs> I am, but it seems to have kind of, once it goes away from our truth and Drake, I, I'm almost kind of like, eh. <laughs> No. Yeah, Drake was behind <laughs> chasing down the last guy running. Did you uh you see there was one I think it might have been at SummerSlam and Drake is running down and Carmella trips him <laughs> and then Titus O'Neil puts his foot on his back and someone on Twitter did a side by side of Titus O'Neil laying in front of the ring from the Royal Rumble or from the Greatest Rumble oh, and gosh. Drake Maverick and Titus O'Neil standing on his back. I thought it was a beautiful little I did not see any yeah, of that. Yeah, that was that was funny. <laughs> that is funny. I would My agree. My things change. Yes, uh, I still love that the Titus World <laughs> Slide. World Slide. Um yeah, I would agree uh the R Truth thing is always I think funny with Carmella and then Dwayne even- Gretzky yeah commentary team and then uh drake uh i'm not sure why we're doing elias i think it's what his second or third time is title uh, three i believe yeah i mean i'm not sure uh, even the mike and marie i thought that was fun for a week or two yeah um we still don't know if drake has consummated his marriage yet I mean, uh, that's what on, i was just dude. gonna mention so i'm glad i quickly mentioned this but actually i was just gonna say we still don't know who maria's you know, baby daddy is for the... I mean, we can assume it's Mike, but maybe they're not... We got, like, what, five months, six months? I don't even know how much longer, but I guess they'll figure that out in... There's time. Five or six months. But I was going to say, um, Renee, you know, mm-hmm. Drake's woman... Right. Um, I don't think she's signed because she was just announced for a local show in Wisconsin... Oh, really? ...in two months, and she's actually going to be having a match against Victoria... The oh, legend, yeah. who I believe is on like a farewell type tour. Oh, really? And I'm hoping she gets a Hall of Fame call in about six or seven months hmm. for Tampa. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, I would go back to Drake. Um, She's you know, got a restaurant. Uh, Victoria has a restaurant in Chicago, I believe. Yeah, I, I think that may have closed. But oh, really? No. Oh. Do not quote me on that one. But yeah, getting back to the Renee thing, I, I mean, they should just sign her. And they should have her and Drake like 
not have their own show, but I feel there's a lot there. That's what I'm getting at. Right. And doing Back to Elias, I'm not sure, accomplishes. Like, 24-7 title is supposed to be wacky and ridiculous. And whether Elias you like the, is not wacky and ridiculous. And, well, <laughs> in the ring, I don't see him, you know, doing much else, I guess. But even the pregnancy thing, as ridiculous as that was, you know, it right. led him to the doctor's office and Drake at the hotel with his wife <laughs> wearing the title. <laughs> right, right. In the or, classic Shawn Michaels. Or the wedding, <laughs> even the, the honeymoon. There was a, you know. That was brilliant. Our truth at the wedding and then even the, the plane with Jinder or on the yeah. golf course. Right. And I guess, you know, Elias could go to, like, a concert or something, but I don't know. I kind of want the 24-7 title from, like, a month ago to kind of return. Yeah. It's kind of fallen off the rails a little bit. Did you know that Elias actually put out an EP like he said he did? I looked it up. There's four songs. Yeah, and... (laughs) And they're all horrible. I think um, Jillian Hall also had a song on iTunes. Her yeah, Christmas I remember that. Song or and it, yes, you can actually still find it, and it is horrible. It is it is some of the most wretched stuff I've ever heard. Didn't it actually like chart? I something? think so. Oh my gosh! I know the Elias one did the the that night that he taught that he mentioned that it was released. Oh gosh! Yeah. So we're gonna move on from that. Okay. Real quickly, I wrote Stone Cold on here. Like we said, he kind of endorsed uh, Seth Rollins, but. Did you watch his show after Raw? I did not. I did I not go either. to bed. I do not watch his show. I did not watch Ms. or Mrs. I don't. Uh, yeah, I don't do any of that reality crap. I didn't really care for it. So that I was kind a- of have a disdain for reality shows. Like, okay, they just they bug me to no end. By the way, I just saw a headline. I don't know where it was. Somewhere on somewhere it popped up on my Twitter. Don't ask how, but. The, the Chrisleys, is that how you say it? Oh, I read that news story. <laughs> I was so happy to read that because I hate those people with a passion. <laughs> you hate them? I can't stand them. Like, I, I used to have to catch snippets of their show just before Raw would come on, and they, they're they like the Kardashians. What are they famous for? Can anybody tell me why they're in the position they're in? Yeah, I have not uh, seen a single second of their show. Garbage. <laughs> hot, I mean, Brock Lesnar level garbage. Brock Lesnar, that's uh, that's kind of saying a lot, isn't it? Yeah, okay. it really is. Well, either way, there's, I don't even know, I don't even know how we're talking about the Chrisley. Should we just move on? Because yeah. there was the headline about them doing like, um, what was it, tax evasion or something? Yeah, they got tr- indicted for tax evasion. Yeah, so now there's, um, I don't know if you saw the next headline. I don't think we can even say it, but. It it just keeps getting worse and worse. So I'm not sure how much longer USA is going to deal with that. And no, I did not see the Stone Cold. I was just asking about that in case you had an opinion on it. I was kind of curious how it went because it seemed like, you yeah. know, like a talk show, but like they'd actually they go. They do stuff. Not like, you know, sitting at a desk. So Right. It, I mean, if that's what Stone Cold is into, I hope it works out for him. But I'm not my fancy, really. Yeah, I think it got like, I think it was like fifth or seventh on viewers for the night. So it seemed to have done okay. So for late night, that's not so bad. No, no. So, all right. My final topic for Raw, I have here King of the Ring. So I'm going to yeah, list off the uh, participants. But before I do that. I have um, a pick already, and you're going to be shocked. Probably not, but yeah. Um, just before I list everyone off here, um, what do you think of the King of the Ring tournament? You know, it's always an interesting thing. I, I liked it back. I always harken back to when Bret Hart won it because that was the first time I was exposed to the King of the Ring, and that was a one night pay per view. So I thought that was uh, one of those good storytelling moments where the guy had to wrestle three times in one night, really actually earned it. So it'll be interesting to see how they choose to do it. Is it going to be one night? Is it going to be multiple? Um, are we going to have this going? I mean, you got weeks of storyline, technically, if you want to play it that way, but then you get burned out on it. Yeah, they have already announced how it's going to go and the brackets and stuff. Uh, oh, really? Next week will be the first round. The next week after that will be the second round. I think the third week is in Madison Square Garden. Yep, I did read and that they the, were going to have the finals, I thought. it. And then finals will be a Clash of Champions, okay. which I guess will be non-title, so whatever you make of that. But um, They get the title of king. <laughs> somebody will get that crown. So I like that, you know... I. I like it better when it is all in one night. It makes right. it feel like it's more, but obviously it makes it feel special. I get it. They want to stretch it out and watch, you know, each week instead of just blow it all in one night. Yeah. And it reminds me of in 2005 when they did the draft lottery. They spread mm-hmm. it out over a month. They oh, had really? One somebody showed up on Raw, which first was John Cena. Yeah. 
and then somebody showed up on SmackDown, and then the next week somebody showed up on Raw, and then it kept going, and then the final week I think was two people. Okay. So each week it'd be who's going to show up. Yeah, right. So hmm. kind of like the wild card, but that's been totally forgotten about that by now. That was ridiculous. I think someone said there was eight SmackDown guys on Raw this week in case we're <laughs> still keeping track, but here are the 16 participants, even if you already have your pick. Yep. I'm just going to name them, just maybe refresh you, maybe change your mind a little bit. But Nope. <laughs> Because I read him, too. Okay. But go ahead, for those who didn't. Right. Shelton Benjamin, Buddy Murphy, Andrade, Elias, Chad Gable, Apollo Cruz, Ali, Kevin Owens, Cesaro, Sami Zayn, Baron Corbin, the stud Drew McIntyre, Samoa Joe, Cedric Alexander, Ricochet, and The Miz. Yeah. So eight from Raw, eight from SmackDown again right. for what it matters. Um, without revealing your pick, do you have like a top three that you're thinking of? I, yeah, I could like who's gonna be in the finals. It'd probably be a top four because top I'm four. That's true. Final matches. Well, right off the bat, I'm thinking Ricochet. You don't have yep. to reveal if that's one of that, yours. That is one of mine. Yep. I think Ricochet. This seems like something that you know Heyman would want to kind of get behind him for. So I would say Ricochet. Obviously, I would include the stud Drew McIntyre. I think some people think Stone Cold comparison with Kevin Owens, he's going to win and cut a promo. See that. Yeah. I don't think Kevin Owens is going to win, but moving that was my two raw picks. So moving over to the SmackDown side, I think um, Ali. Ali think, could be a dark horse. I think uh, the way I'm kind of doing is that I put I put the word King in front of their names. I know that's kind of dumb, but King yeah. Ali. I suppose, yeah. King Andrade is my other pick. And then, obviously, King Drew McIntyre. And then King Ricochet, which is his Twitter handle. Yeah, that's right, yeah. <laughs> which is kind of funny. So those would be my top four right off the bat. I'm I'd, not... have to, I'd have to agree with that because I really didn't give much thought beyond who I thought was going to take it all. But I you know, I, I like the scenario of all four of those. Yeah, I mean, a lot of times um, with multiple choice, I just kind of do process of elimination. I mean, Shelton Benjamin, probably not. Probably Buddy, not. Buddy Murphy. Chad Gable, no. Chad, <laughs> Chad Gable, eh. Apollo, I'm a fan, but no, probably not. Elias right. doesn't fit him. Kevin Owens, I get it, but Shane's probably going to screw him. Yeah. King Cesaro, can't that argue that. That'd mm-hmm. be good. King Sami Zayn, you know. King Corbin. Huh? King Corbin, uh-huh. yeah, yeah. Sami Zayn, probably going to lose in 30 seconds. Yeah. King Joe, not bad, but I don't think so. King The Miz, not really. Not going to happen. King Alexander from Cedric, eh, maybe. But mm. again, so right away you can probably eliminate like eight or ten guys. So Oh, yeah. Do you have a top four or are you just going to tell me your pick? I'll right tell on? you my pick. <laughs> I think Drew McIntyre's taking it all. What? Yep. Drew McIntyre's taking it all. King Drew? Yeah, he's going to do it, man. I They've been looking for a way to make him you know, credible, and I think this is a way to do it. Yeah, and whether it's official or unofficial, obviously you could see whoever wins kind of going then to the main event. Absolutely. And having a little bit of a boost like King Booker did in 2006. Booker. He won that and then beat Ray, I think it was a month or two after that. So I'm not going to argue, obviously, Drew McIntyre. I will say he absolutely destroyed Cedric Alexander in a great match on Raw. Yeah. So that may be of a, maybe a little setting the stage kind of for him to make a little bit of a run here. And they were talking heavily about King of the Ring during that match, so I could definitely see them you know, using that as a, well, here he is. He's our poster boy for King of the Ring. Yeah, and kind of like uh, Money in the Bank, I think it just fits a heel more. Right, I think so too. You know, the surprise cash, and you know, it doesn't always work with the face. And with heel, you know, obviously they can brag about being the king of the ring. So yeah. As long as Shane McMahon doesn't insert himself in the finals and win like the best uh, in the world. <laughs> then I'll quit. Probably Uh-oh. not. No, I won't. Are you saying that on air? No. You know I won't. You know I won't. I never do. All right. So I think uh, over the next few weeks, uh, we're probably going to talk about a bunch of king of the ring, maybe some past king of the ring stuff. So. A lot there, and uh, I'm kind of glad to see it come back. A nice little cool thing to get us going for the fall season for yeah, a few weeks. Yeah, here we go. So I thought that was cool. We're going to kind of segue from that over to SmackDown. The Kevin Owens and Shane McMahon feud is continuing. Continuing on. Here we go. I mean, did you really think that Shane was going to go off TV that easily? I didn't know if he was going to go off TV, but again, right when Owens low blowed him and then Elias got beat up. So on SmackDown, Shane fined Owens $100,000 for hitting an official, which was Elias at some Right. And is, again, just kind of ridiculous and all that. And Owens then went into his private room and 
uh, chucked a chair through a TV, and he's like, "Why don't you make it 105 grand?" Which I'm not sure why he has <laughs> five thousand dollar TV. Five thousand dollar TV. <laughs> Yeesh. You're not going to be a billion dollar company for that long if you keep buying five thousand dollar TVs. Yeah, but I thought that was funny. But you know, as ridiculous as the fine stuff was, it went back to Owens as a family man saying, "You right. just took out of my kid's college fund. You just did this, this, and this." And, right. You know all that stuff. So I'm not necessarily surprised it's continuing, but it did. Uh, you know, it seemed like I don't know what else is next. Is it right. another cell match? They had a cell match two years ago. So I mean, you got to put some type of exclamation point on the whole thing, right? Yeah, I guess so. Even <laughs> uh, I'm a fan of Shane, so even I'm kind of like, all right, let's get going here. Right. So the other thing I wanted to quickly discuss, I have two more things after this, is Ember Moon versus Charlotte. This was not an official number one contenders match for Bailey, who wasn't on the show, but whatever. Um, Ember Moon lost to Charlotte. Yep. Not a surprising result, I guess. But um, is Ember Moon done already? <laughs> I mean, you, you kind of hope not, but it doesn't seem like they give her much of a, a push yet. Maybe they're just not, maybe they're holding off on them, you know, for when she's actually going to get the title and they'll run wild with her at that point. But maybe for now, she's just kind of establishing herself as, you know, main roster talent. Yeah, I'm a little worried about <laughs> this loss right away. Yeah. I'm a little worried about it. The way the SummerSlam crowd reacted, same with Mia Yim, uh, right. kind, kind of disappointing <clears throat> there. And, you know, where it goes from here, I don't know, but Charlotte versus Bailey seems to way, seems to be the way this is headed. I mean, Charlotte in Charlotte. Charlotte in Charlotte. And I wrote about this on my 411mania.com column that has apparently not been posted yet. But uh, think about it. Becky versus Sasha. Yep. Bailey versus Charlotte. Oh, wow. You got the four horsewomen on the same show. You got the four horsewomen on the same show, all in title matches after retiring Trish and main eventing WrestleMania. So I'm not sure if they have officially took over the main roster. Yes, that was a takeover pun. Ooh. But I don't know if they officially took over, but you know this kind of cements it in my mind. All right. Envision this with me, if you will. Oh. So the one of the women's matches headlines... All four of them come out to, like, congratulate each other. Like, hey, we had a great night. I know. Just follow. <laughs> and then here comes Shayna Baszler and Jessamine Duke and Marina Shafir and Ronda Rousey. With the Fox premiere a week and a half after that. Speaking of Ronda Rousey, just announced. Yeah. She will be on a Fox TV show this season. Oh, really? So she is keeping busy. I don't watch it, but 911 ever? Nope. Okay. Is that like Rescue 911 from back in the 80s when <laughs> William Shatner told us about? Uh, that was a good show. <laughs> Didn't that open with like ambulance? Yeah, yep, oh. ambulance. And then shortly after that was Unsolved Mysteries with yes. uh, Robert Stack. Man, you just brought me back. Every time right. that would come on, all of us you knew kids something was would come run to the TV. <laughs> and some were scary, some right? were creepy some were you know good stories with a happy ending but oh yeah either way uh ronda and the fox so that's already starting the fox connection there so it is i don't think that four on four scenario will happen <laughs> no probably not but but it's a nice vision survivor series is somewhat near yeah but they don't do that anymore i still don't yeah i don't really know if that feud's even going to happen you know it's been teased for so long and again we're still kind of waiting on if ronda's going to announce you know Maybe some baby news any minute now. Right. So you never know what she's doing, but that's cool that she's going to be on Fox. It's cool that the four horsewomen of WWE are basically going to be headlining Clash of Champions. And, you know, if it's Kofi and Orton, I don't know if they'd get the main event spot. And then if it's right. Rollins and Braun, I'm not sure if that would. I don't know if so. the King of the Ring finals would. So it's like, you know, maybe Becky and Sasha does main event. I could see it. I could I mean, see the crowd wanting that more than oh, yeah. Charlotte over Bailey, which... Probably will happen. Right. So up next, I have uh, Buddy Murphy. Kind of had a breakout performance on SmackDown. He he ended up losing, but yeah. that's okay. And Roman Reigns can't won. win them all. Can't win them all or any. <laughs> Roman Reigns ended up winning with a spear, and a lot of people are thinking this is going to lead to kind of the respect angle, and Buddy will eventually turn face and kind of not play second in command, but kind of now be with Reigns because they've earned each other's respect, all that stuff. Um. I don't know if you saw the match. No, I did not. Okay. Well, it was very good. It was great. 
Buddy, again, even though he lost, gained a ton. Everyone on Twitter praised him and pretty much said, I think the phrase was, the secret's out. Okay. Because he called himself, you know, the best the best kept secret. secret, right? That's his Twitter handle. So Reigns even gave him props. Reigns with his new contract he signed. Yep. So Multi-year, uh, p- quite possibly the highest paid superstar on the roster at this point. Yeah, full-time, I'm not sure who else would top him, and I don't know that he was ever going anywhere. (laughs) Oh, no, I I don't think that was ever a question. He seems like a lifer to me, Yeah, and I know never say never and all this stuff. Like, Brett Favre was a lifer on the Packers, and then he went and played. Don't, don't, no, don't bring up. You know, it's funny, people call him a lifer. He played for four teams, Falcons, 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 Packers, Packers, Vikings, and even one year with the Jets. With the Jets. I, I, I understood the Jets. Then to see him in that purple jersey, man. And I have jerseys of both teams, Jets and Vikings. Why do you hate everybody? And for so the record, much? for the Why record, you got to stir the pot. Are you Angelo Dawkins? Are you trying to stir things up? For the record, I, uh, <laughs> I uh, wore a Vikings Favre jersey in his first game back at Lambeau, and I think it was my brother. He said, um, "I forgot the story. You'd have to ask him next time you see him." Somebody offered him for his ticket like seven hundred bucks. Oh my. And he said, no, far returning as a Viking is right. you're never going to get that again. And obviously we all went. We have season tickets. So it's just crazy the money being offered for those tickets. And we saw it, and obviously the Vikings smoked them that year. The following year, though, Packers got the revenge and went on to win the Super Bowl. So you just, they got- you just got to poke and prod, don't you? <laughs> I remember when he went to the Jets. Like, you came into work that night, and you're like, all right, here we go, and you pull, you took your jacket off, and there's a fresh new Brett Favre Jets jersey. I can't be a Favre fan? <clears throat> no, I'm not saying you can't be, but you just you got to jab, you know, every which way. Just to be And like, don't blame me, because I remember the Wisconsin affiliates all that year started airing Jets games during the noon hour on. Well, I mean, so, you know. So is it? <laughs> yeah, don't blame me. I, I once uh, I was at a bar once after he went to the Vikings, and I saw a shirt that had the Minnesota Vikings logo, and in that same font that they wrote Vikings, it said Vicodin. <laughs> wow! So it's okay when he does that on the Packers, but when he's on the Vikings, it's a joke. Yes. Okay. Now you get to see. Now you understand the love for the Packers. Just making sure we're not hypocrites here. Just making sure. So, anyways, well, you better stop that. <laughs> but when he wins the Super Bowls, then oh, we, then we love him. Oh, poor pain yeah. pills. Oh, but, but when he's on the Vikings, it's uh, it's horrible. Yeah. Oh yeah. See, he's, you're he's a monster. Yeah. You're understanding. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad that you're on. We're on the same page. We are on the same page. So I don't think Reigns was going anywhere. Never say never. No. I mean, he can say whatever, but he's never going anywhere, I don't think. And I honestly wouldn't be surprised if he signed a 20-year deal. <laughs> no, seriously. <laughs> the like, Bret Hart deal? Yeah, Bret Hart or even Hogan has done that. The you know? lifetime. You know, I mean, a taker. He's probably signed 20 years himself. Oh, gosh, 20 years. <laughs> well, that's why they're calling his deal a lifetime deal because he's at that age where any long term is pretty much that's it. Yeah, and I still say Undertaker's thing is going to happen, but you're delusional. That's another podcast for a different time, but you're still delusional. So the last thing I have, then we can end this podcast and all of you can go to bed cuz I'm going to post this <laughs> late tonight. So Roman Reigns. Yep. We still don't know who attacked him. Not a clue. We assume, well, at first we thought it was Buddy because he was spotted there, which, by the way, there was a report that that was an accident. He just so happened to be walking Oh, really? Around. So they're like, oh, crap, somebody spotted Buddy. We got to we got to use him. We got to drag him into hey, this. Hey, if that's what gets him on TV. I know. It's like Ali got concussed and then Kofi became champion. Yep. So anyways, uh, we still don't know who the attacker was. Uh, the ending of SmackDown was a little cliffhanger with Reigns basically going to confront Brian and Rowan. He's not buying their story that they're innocent. He's not right. buying it. The fans aren't buying it. They were chanting a bunch of crap at him. Yeah. They aren't buying it one bit. And Brian actually responded by saying, next week I investigated and I'm going to bring you the attacker. Well, of course he is. It was quite I mean, the little cliffhanger. He's going to save us all. He's going to save us all. Um, any idea who, I guess we're finally going to get the reveal next, uh, next Tuesday. We think we're going to get the, remember we also had a career altering announcement that never happened either. So. Yeah. And I'm, I'm thinking that this is going to be it by him saying, remember those weeks I delayed it. I was trying to take out reins those weeks. <laughs> I mean, you know, I was a little busy, but, yeah. um, so any ideas or is it just going to be Brian? It's me. I did it. <laughs> I drove the car. Now, if. Now, if Brock Lesnar was attacked, I'd suspect it was. Yeah, you know I'd, I. You wouldn't even have to pay me. 
pay you. <laughs> You'd do it for free. I would do it for free. Yes. All right. Well, let's not talk about assault <laughs> here. So um, I'm I'm not saying I. No. Oh boy. Here we, okay. Next. Uh, it's like how uh, Jim Cornette got uh, sued <laughs> or a uh, what was it a restraining order from uh, Vince Russo for threatening his life. Oh yeah, yeah. And then Jim Cornette responded by saying. I never said I was going to kill you. I said I'd like to. <laughs> right, right. And then said I woke up to you know, dreams strangling you in my sleep. <laughs> you know when we bring Jim Cornette into any conversation, whoever you're trying to defend has just gone off. Yeah, as like, much as wrong. you know, he does obviously say a lot of bad things, I do kind of tend to side with him on the actually uh, the, the Joey Ryan thing. Absolutely. The whole, uh, he calls them play wrestlers. And, you know, I'm not going to go that far, obviously, but... You know, if there is one place where you can kind of be like, yeah, I kind of agree with them. And by the way, the latest thing is like uh, some people are changing their Twitter names to their real names. Yeah, uh, Dolph did that. A lot of people did. I think Zack Ryder did. A few people in Impact did it. And, you know. Um, uh, La- Mojo did too. <laughs> Mojo. He's, yeah, he's got like a, a very Arabic sounding name. I think he is Arabic. It might be. Yeah. Just like Sami he- Zayn. <laughs> Seriously, he I think his name is Ramy something or other, but he's from Syria. I think um I forgot who it was. I think it was Lance Storm by the way, who If I can be serious for a moment. Yeah, who by the way uh, announced he's uh shutting down his academy. I read that. And he may be elite soon, but I'm not sure if that's been announced yet. But the thing with the um I mean NXT is starting their Canada branch next. Yeah. So, you know, I would think it's that, but don't think it is but anyways we'll get to that a different day the story with um lance storm even chimed in on this and was like he saw somebody's name i think it was uh, someone in impact and he's like i almost unfollowed you because i saw your name yeah and it's like this isn't helping anything and i don't know it's just a whole debate right now yeah i actually i I think i did read some of i did read a lot of the thread when that this story first kind of came out a couple like a week ago or so yeah. And uh, I, I get the point, you know, because when you're on in a public forum, you're portraying your public persona. So, I mean, I get what they're saying, but at the same time, they're people, you know. We have to understand that there is a fine line between entertainment and real life. Yeah, I just remembered who it was. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce her name. Is it Jordan? Jordan, yeah. Um, Grace? Jordan. Yeah, Jordan Grace. I don't know what her actual name is or, you know, I haven't watched impact so i would not know all this but um after the back and forth she pretty much came out and was like well and if i'm being honest it's also because i'm in some casting calls and doing some uh script readings for hollywood so right. to me when they do that that tells me they're already thinking life outside that's what right. it means to me so when you, you have see, to i mean i mean mojo has his stuff and it just tells me that you know they're already beyond the character yeah so well i mean in the you know in wrestling it's not a long-term career you can't put your body through that for too long so you got to think you know big picture stuff and if you're not being used and your talent isn't you know you're in catering most of the time then you have nothing but time to think about what to do afterwards yeah and uh you can take that either way because you're right you know it's not forever but you can also take it as oh they already have one foot out the door they're not committed to their character you know even a uh, uh, rosemary do you know rosemary yeah. from impact yeah she went to elite i believe or she did no she she was in all in she has a um separate account for her personal see now that makes sense but then on rosemary she's dark creepy plays the character right right so that makes sense she's not out there posting you know her out and about yeah and even um with the luchadors they always cover their face if they're like at disneyland or whatever so they stick to it i don't know there's a whole thing about it you could argue both sides of you know they are people but then also it's like well you make more money if you commit to your character right but kayfabe is dead in the name of (laughs) in the name of the internet kayfabe is dead but i mean doing that doesn't help it so it's like you're you know, it's a self-fulfilling po- prophecy. Yeah. Like, oh, kayfabe is dead. Now watch me change my name. Right. And watch me be a person. Now, now watch <laughs> me take a crap on the business and do flippy moves and well, use my. You, sometimes you got to do that. Use a body part to flip people and. Yeah. Well, yeah. that guy's a joke. But then complain about kayfabe. So. Right. All right, so on that little downer of a note, anything else this week <laughs> that uh, maybe uh, we get a little positive? Something SummerSlam, NXT, good week in Toronto, something. Yay. 
<laughs> yeah, a good week. I it thought. was it was a good week. Uh, I think Raw delivered, SummerSlam delivered, Takeover delivered. I'm sorry I didn't watch SmackDown, but I you know had things going on on Tuesdays. So. Yeah, ratings actually had been up for all the shows. Uh, yep. Raw had, had its uh, I want to say second biggest number of the year behind the Raw reunion and I think the Mania after Mania. I think right. But either way, so very quietly, I think uh, Raw has been you know pretty good the past few weeks. It's been getting better. It's I think been it's getting been more getting better. Um, there's a story that, um, regardless of reports, it's you know still Vince Bischoff has nothing to do with SmackDown. Right, right. I don't know if he ever will, or if it is just kind of the Fox connection. But whether it's Vince or not, I think the shows have been getting better. You can you know thank Heyman, you can thank Bischoff. Honestly, I don't really care. I just want a good show. So yeah, I don't care who. You know, the time seems to be flying when I'm watching Raw nowadays. I used to be like, oh geez, it's only nine thirty. <laughs> we got the main event. Yeah, oh geez, you know. And now it's like, oh. We're at the main event already. Okay, here we go. Yeah, and like SummerSlam, you know, I know it's the biggest show of the summer, but, you know, there is a lengthy uh, period where it's just like I tap out. Like, right. Let's get on with it. And, you know, that hurts the crowds too. So. Absolutely. I mean. All right. So any last thing you want before I get to my plugs? Yeah, you to get a notebook and quit using toilet paper for your notes. Hey, it doubles. It takes notes, and then it... It's well, two-ply. And then, <laughs> actually. So, anyways, uh, you are listening to the 411 Foresight Wrestling Podcast, if you made it this far. This is on the 411 Podcasting Network. You can listen to us on Spotify, Stitcher, iTunes, Google Play, YouTube, and, of course, 411mania.com. I have given that plug a million times. You know where to find us. If you want to leave us a five-star review, we still five only star. have five-star reviews. That is on iTunes, and give us all that love. You know we love you back. Steve, what do you got? Hey, the Resonant Complex debut album, North Avenue, is available anywhere digital music is sold. You can check us out on YouTube. Search The Resonant Complex. We are also available on iTunes. You can also stream us on Spotify, so go check it out. Go check it out or listen to it right now. And until next time, enjoy your wrestling. We always said they'd never take us alive. If this is this-